Welcome! This video contains an introduction, an interview so you can gain deeper understanding of the subject from spirit level, and a group frequency calibration so you can start to clear the frequency distortion patterns around this topic. Enjoy! Hi everyone, my name is Karen Chong and I'm here with my co-host Dennis Kelly. And today we're discussing breakdown before the breakthrough. So the cycle of life is actually the cycle of life, death, life. And just like a tree in the forest, which starts as a seed, and then with some sun and some water becomes a sapling, and then becomes a massive tree, and eventually the tree dies and falls to the forest floor in order to decompose and provide nutrients for all the new growth. We are the same in our journeys. We actually need to experience dissolution, periods of letting go, of sometimes what looks like crises, in order to continue to evolve. Much like a caterpillar that enters the cocoon to become the butterfly, one form needs to drop or change in order to become something else. So today, we're going to talk about challenges, crises, and growth so that you are prepared and can experience the necessary growing pains with grace and ease so that you can ultimately become who and what you want to be. So let's jump right in. Dennis, what's your first question for me? Wow. Breakdown before the breakthrough. Yes. You know, that sounds kind of like Hollywood, the latest and greatest <laughs> hi-fi, sci-fi, so what, what exactly are you talking about, Karen? What does this have anything to do with evolving as a human? So I think a lot of us in our culture think of breakdown as something negative, and we try to, evolve, we try to avoid it. We want to keep everything status quo and comfortable and the same, because it's certain and it's not scary, and it's predictable. Sometimes, though, especially if you've had frequency work, things can start to... Um, to move away from that pattern of, of certainty. It starts like that cube that we refer to in a different session. That cube that we keep our lives in starts to break, starts to get bigger so that we can expand into something else, into like this larger sphere, for example. So the, it may look like breakdown and we cast it as something negative and something that we need to be afraid of, but actually it is, uh, an indication that things need to shift. Kind of like, you know, when a dog, a dog has like mud on them, they'll shake really strong, like hard to get the mud off. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? It looks like chaos because all this mud goes flying, he's shaking, right? And then he's clean. So the same, in the same way, it can look like something negative. However, we don't really ask, do those things serve us? We just know that we, we have them and we're comfortable with them. But perhaps that is actually binding us and keeping us small and we are ready for something bigger, more expansive, even though it seems scary because it's not known. I, w I was just thinking about friends and family members that have gone through major transitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, is if, if you look at that transformation, you can always see where there was something that triggered it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it was cancer, maybe it was a car accident, maybe it was a loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. But these major, you know, like you say, could be a crisis. A crisis. Mm -hmm. But also out of it came this golden opportunity to just truly transform as a person. Yes, absolutely. And it doesn't necessarily, because it like shakes our world. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And then in that shaking of that world and that uncertainty and that place of like, I don't know where anything is anymore, this tremendous expansion can happen because it's not being held yeah. so tightly in what we know. We actually allow for something else to happen because we're in this place of deep emotional turmoil, perhaps, or uncertainty, or just it seems like chaos, but it's an allowance of something else to come in. So that's really... Kind of going back to a previous session is when we talked about allowing and mm -hmm. following and just mm -hmm. surrendering. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times I show tremendous resistance to all that. Mm -hmm. And I can only do it so long and then something comes along and just boom. Yeah. 
and I don't have a choice. Yeah. And it's just like, whoa. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the breakdown that you're talking about. Yeah. Is that life will, it, you know, no matter who we are, what we are, what we think we are, something will come along to help just shake the tree. Mm -hmm. And then we have to make a decision. Yeah. What do we do? Yeah, totally. Do we, you know, yeah. give up? Or do we see it as an opportunity and move forward? Exactly. And you know, it's interesting because people respond differently to these opportunities. As you say, you can use it to turn on yourself and just kind of like hang poor on. Me. Poor yeah, me. poor me. And like hang on to what you want. Or you can use it as a chance of like, oh, well, perhaps I'm meant to learn something here. Maybe it's not happening to me. Maybe it's happening for me so that I can learn something. I wonder sometimes, you know, when you think about different people in your life, some people just seem to have a lot of chaos. Yes. <laughs> yes. They and do. they just seem so challenged. Yep. Yep. And other people just, it just seems like it's a sunny day. And yes. Yeah. And they have so ease. Why, why is that? That doesn't seem fair. So some people, actually I've seen this a lot in the, pe in, in the people that I work with. Some people have the distortion pattern of struggle or suffering that they have t received from their lineage. So no matter what happens to them, they're always, always, always struggling and they don't have ease. So if you remove those distortion patterns, you actually can experience more ease. Also, in addition to that, a lot of those same people who have these distortion patterns of struggle have a hard time being in their bodies because they're struggling so hard. Yeah. They're resisting a lot. And the more resistance we have, the harder the lesson has to be yeah. to shake up the world so that we can start to soften and allow and surrender. So I kind of call it like, someone told me this a, a, a long time ago, and I love this analogy. It's feather, brick, truck. So you're going to learn the lessons that you're going to learn. And at first, it's going to be a little <laughs> feather. It's going to be like, hey, pay attention. Maybe you should take a look at this. And the next time, it's going to be a brick. And the third time, it's going to be a truck because you're going to learn the lessons you're going to learn. And it just depends on whether we're paying attention. And I personally uh, prefer the feather. <laughs> I mean, I've experienced the truck. I mean, don't get me wrong. But like, I prefer the feather. And part of this is as you become more and more neutral and more and more detached to the outcome, it doesn't have to be any of those things because you can see them coming. You're like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm, this is the way it is. So I meant to learn something from this. Okay, what am I going to learn? So let me ask you, we were talking about people that just seem to be, you know, kind of have that uh, predisposed to chaos. Yeah. And as far as fate... Yeah. Or maybe that's just, you know, the world that they were born into and that's their, you know. Yeah. But is that true or can, from, is there always something that can be yeah. helpful? So from my perspective, um, I have a different view of fate. So I feel like we've all chosen to come here to learn certain lessons. Okay. How we choose to learn them is really up to us. And the distortion patterns that run through us are there to be transcended. Okay? And so you can, um, the people who have all that chaos and all that drama around them, that's not necessarily um, fate, that's just the distortion patterns that they came into. So I'm going to go into left field again, shall we? <laughs> Let's go. So what often happens is that in our cultures, we're not very, let's just say, educated on the death process. In fact, not at all. And that's a different topic that we'll talk about yeah. some other time. Yeah. But oftentimes what happens is a result of us not knowing what the heck happens. And in fact, in our culture, it's actually quite rude to talk about death. We don't talk about it at all. Like it's not something that's discussed. Um, and so what happens often is that when we die, we freak out because we have no preparation for what is about to happen next. So what happens then is that because we have these un uh, we're asleep when we die. We're not awake when we die. What happens is we reincarnate with these same distortion patterns and they come back again, Ooh. but more intensely. So 
part of what we're doing here, I realize, is for to have a better life, to have more abundance, this to have lifetime. this lifetime, this lifetime, to have yeah. more <clears throat> in this lifetime, to have whatever that we're talking about, freedom from whatever it yeah. is. Really, it's so that we can awaken before we die, and so that then you get a choice, okay, and you don't repeat the same patterns over and over again the next incarnation. And if you if you pass and you're awake, you actually get to choose whether or not you want to reincarnate. You get to choose what you want, which is tremendously liberating because you don't just go back and kick into the wheel of reincarnation with these patterns more heavily enmeshed in you. Because you are going to learn, whether it's this lifetime or the next one. So it's almost like we're doing this work, mm -hmm. you know, but it's actually living our lives. We're doing it not only for the purpose of this moment, in this time, in this lifetime, yeah. but actually for the long haul. Yes. As yes. far as eternity. Yes. And so it's certainly worth it. Absolutely. No and matter I, how difficult it is. Yeah, and I, I think that a lot of people, you know, they want to talk about now and this lifetime, and of course, because it's their physical reality. And, you know, in the grand scheme of the infiniteness of all it is, this lifetime is extraordinarily short. And I know it doesn't feel like that. I mean, I get it. I mean, to me, it doesn't feel like you know, um, infiniteness all the time. But I just, it's, it really is about that. The end game yeah. is the awakening before dying. You know, let me ask you, yeah. do, I, do I have to believe in the things that you believe in for this a work. session yeah. with you to be successful? Do I have to nope. believe in past lives? Nope. <laughs> do I have to believe in all these things that you talk about as far as... No, distortions and you know because mm -mm. I've never heard of some of this before no you don't have to believe in it you don't have to believe that it works you don't have to believe any of it it's just gonna happen no matter what so it just, it's okay you don't have to believe so Let's the opportunity anyway. is just to be open yes just just be open to the fact that maybe there's a possibility that the work you do could make my life mm -hmm. so much better easier simpler more jo joyful absolutely mm -hmm. and the wonderful thing about this work is that, and I'll call it work, but I don't, whatever this process is, yeah. um, is that as we become more and more highly vibrating because the distortion patterns are falling away and these spheres of individual pure, pure source energy can now start to spin at these faster and faster rates, what happens is that people around you start to, as you move up, you pull all these people with you because we're all part of this oneness. So you can spread the gift of your beingness without doing anything to help others, just by simply working on yourself. In fact, it's actually very important to focus on our own, let's call it ascension or growth or awakening, whatever you want to call it, because it has a tremendous amount. Of, if you want to help others, doing this has so much impact, much more impact than direct, you know, anything else, really. Because I'm sure there are times when you feel kind of very self-centered. Mm -hmm. Is because what we talked about is the going in and mm -hmm. you know really taking a look and really doing that you know, mm -hmm. and so you start to kind of like who am I? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just I'm very focused on myself. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying is the gift that you're giving others is the fact that you're doing this work. Absolutely. And as your frequencies change, mm -hmm. those around you will be impacted. Absolutely. Yeah. And even more so for your uh, direct line. So if you have children, yep. um, as you clear your lineage patterns, you free your children um, because you're clearing your own stuff. So they uh, obviously will clean up and they will clear, especially if they're not born yet. Like if you're about to have children and you don't have them yet, as you clear, they will not have the same lineage patterns that you do because you've broken that pattern wow. if that makes sense wow. and if your children exist already because especially if they're young as you clean up they will naturally follow you much more quickly so that's really cool you know something else just came to mind is you were you were talking about breakdown before breakthrough mm -hmm. so what if i do have a close friend or a family member mm -hmm. or somebody that's mm -hmm. going through this mm -hmm. And they're so caught up in it. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I could do to work with you for the sake of them? Yes, you can. So if you have a session with me, um, I can work on someone else through you. Okay. Okay. Whether they're dead or alive, it really is kind of irrelevant. Um, Stop so, right there. Yep. Whether they're dead or alive. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, so they don't need to be in a body for me to work on them because it's all frequency patterns. We're all frequency patterns. Whether or not we're embodied or not embodied is really kind of irrelevant. We're just frequency patterns. So because of that, you can, we can I can work on... Um, on okay. the frequency patterns because okay. it's a frequency level okay. and so um, what can happen is that I can work on someone through someone else because um, I can just tap into them through you if that makes sense so that third party do you ask permission to mm -hmm. I ask permission how, how does that we talk about free will yeah and we talk about fate and we talked about energy and frequencies and all this mm -hmm. And this person doesn't have a clue That's true. what you're talking about, yep. but they're going through this trauma. Yep. So what about permission? That's, a, that's an excellent question. I'm really glad you asked. So what will happen is, so a couple things. One is, um, I'm going to answer in two ways. The first is that they will show up in the session, meaning that when I tap into to you and I tap into them, they actually, even though they're not embodied, for lack, I'll just explain it okay. as like, they okay. show up. Okay. So when they show up on spirit level, to me, that to me is permission, because they're like, hi there, would like some help. Okay, that's how it shows. I've only once not been able to help somebody because they're like, no. So obviously, if they don't want to be worked on and I get a no like that, I will say, I'm sorry, yeah. I cannot work on this person. I'm not being allowed. So I would say that. And the other thing too is that there are very few people so far that I've not been allowed to work on just because of my connection to pure source and to help my, and my desire to help the greater good. Yeah. So it's not out of uh, anything other than that. And because that intention is pure and um, I am allowed to access more people because there's a trust there. They know yeah. that I'm not trying to get get something from yeah. them. Yeah. It's really out of this intention for their greatest good. And I, the Karen me, like doesn't is not really present yeah. at all. Yeah. yeah, I'm not channeling. I just I'm not present. It's not about me. It's yeah. about them and what their higher self is calling for at that moment. So as we talk through this, this breakdown before breakthrough, it's really if we talk about that quarter turn, it's quite a blessing. Absolutely. To have whatever that situation is that really shakes us. Yeah. Because we have a tremendous desire for change. Yes. You know, but to initiate it, it's hard. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But whatever this is, this breakdown, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's emotional, physical, mental. Yeah. That's the opportunity. Absolutely. And that's where you have the ability to help somebody through that situation. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if they're willing. Yeah. And um, I would say that it's oftentimes that you turn around later in your life and you will bless that moment that that happened to you. Yeah. Honestly. Because so much change can happen yeah. from that moment that looked like it was just pain and chaos and fear and whatever. Well, I have to tell you, it is so comforting to know that there's people like you with the gifts that you do have, because it can be extremely scary absolutely, and uh, life-threatening or whatever that might be for that individual. Mm -hmm. So thank you for stepping forward and offering those gifts to others. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Karen, could you help me? I hear so often when I look at uh, your video or your website, GFC. Exactly what is that? A GFC is a group frequency calibration, which looks a lot like a guided meditation on a particular topic. And what I'm doing is I'm helping you to remove the distortion patterns of that particular topic. And because you're coming together as a mastermind in a group to connect to pure source even more and to clear the distortion patterns of this particular topic, what happens is a tremendous amount of momentum starts to happen because of the energetic of the entire group. And each individual is able to move faster and ascend higher than they could have on their own. Welcome everyone to the Group Frequency Calibration or GFC on the breakdown before the breakthrough. So let's take three breaths together into the solar plexus. The solar plexus is between your belly button and where the ribs meet in front of your body. So taking a deep breath in, holding it for at least two to three seconds, 
before exhaling all the air out of your lungs and holding out your exhaled or voided breath for at least one to two seconds before taking your second breath. And on your own time, please inhale, holding your breath whenever you get here for at least one to two seconds longer than you did your previous breath before exhaling and holding out your voided breath or your exhaled breath for a second or two longer than you did the previous breath. As you're doing this, becoming very aware of the position of your body. How you are situated in relation to everything else in the room or the out of doors, wherever you are. Taking your third breath, holding your inhale for as long as you possibly can before exhaling all the air out of your lungs and holding out the exhaled breath or voided breath for as long as you can, even if it makes you a little uncomfortable. Getting comfortable with the discomfort in the physical as well as the spirit level. And whenever you are complete with those the three breaths, you are going to breathe regularly into your solar plexus. What is happening currently is the mastermind is starting to gel. And what that means is the mastermind is coming together. So when two or more individuals come together with a common intention, in this case, to connect with pure source even more, which is the highest and purest intention, what happens is the highest and purest versions of ourselves come together, which creates an incredible amount of momentum. And it creates a mastermind. So the mastermind is starting to gel, which will allow you to leverage this momentum to propel you forward even faster. So just note that it's happening. And please also note that I'm working on you even as I speak, for those of you who are new. And I'm working on you at the group, the subgroup, and at the individual level. Taking a deep breath now into your heart space. So the first frequency distortion pattern that we are removing is fear or resistance to discomfort, which is perfectly reasonable. Right? So this breakdown that might happen is a discomfort around change, possible chaos. So of course, as humans, we like certainty. We like feeling safe. So this inherently is disquieting to us. And for some of us, it f freaks us right out. There's a, at least 40% of you are just totally freaked out right now. So just breathe into your heart as I remove this distortion pattern. <clears throat> because with this distortion pattern, you're never going to be able to become unstuck. So let's release this. <sighs> Please note that I'll be making noises on my end, such as exhaling sharply. I mean, you may hear me yawn, you may hear me hum, you may hear me snap. That's just my way of removing the distortion patterns at this current point in time. Likely will change. So you can use this as an opportunity to focus even more. So you hear sounds from my end.
Okay, and so the next distortion pattern is specifically the fear of the depth of the change that is about to happen. So it's a nuance on the first, but it is there. So let's remove this as well. If you're here and listening to this, you're not looking for surface change. You're likely looking for something much more fundamental than that. So let's just release this distortion pattern because if you want this depth, it's going to be difficult to achieve it with this distortion pattern running. Yes, even if you're asking for it. So this will help. Good. So now, as you breathe into your heart space, let's do this together. Let's ask ourselves the following question inside our own minds. And that question is, how can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source? That question again is, how can I become even more aware of my connection only to pure source? As you breathe into your heart space. And on my end, I am enhancing your own natural connection. Amping up your bandwidth, so to speak. So please imagine, see, sense, feel, or become aware of a brilliance that is glowing deep, deep within your heart. And it starts to get brighter, more brilliant, more expanded as you connect even more only to pure source. yourself to be. Very nice. <sighs> Beautiful. All right. So now, please breathe between your lower belly, wherever that is for you, all the way up to your heart space. So imagine, see, sense, feel, or become very aware of the space between your lower belly and your heart. If it's helpful to imagine a tube connecting these two places, please go ahead and do that. Hmm. 
So this is the distortion pattern of self-doubt. Okay? Or put another way, the distortion pattern of the lack of trust in self. So it's second guessing yourself. So let's remove this. So you can start to trust your knowingness. despite what the external circumstance is doing. Now please breathe again into your heart space. So this is the fear, this is the distortion patterns of fear. And depending on where you are on the spectrum of either seeing all of yourself or, and, depending on who you are, allowing others to see all of you. difficult to let go of all the things that no longer serve you if you won't look at them. So as a result, the breakdown can seem more intense because we are holding on to our ideas, beliefs, conclusions, assumptions of who we are and what we want to project into the world. So, releasing this distortion pattern. Continue to take another breath into the heart space, please. Hmm. All right, so this is the frequency distortion pattern that um, fundamental shift is difficult that it will be painful, that it can be incredibly disruptive to our inner state. It can be, it doesn't have to be. So let's remove this frequency pattern. 
distortion so that you could have more ease. With this process. Go. All right. So now please breathe again from your belly button to the front of where your ribs meet in front of your body. So basically your solar plexus again. So right now what's happening is that your pain bodies are getting active. Our pain bodies Sometimes, in an effort to quote-unquote keep us quote-unquote safe, try to keep things in status quo, what is known by it. So, if things start to shift too quickly, it flares, even if it doesn't serve us. So, integrating your pain body so that it will move with you and not impede your progress. Good. Breathing into your heart space, please. All right, so this is the distortion pattern of um, anxiety. And for some of you, it's fear for a small, for actually, it's not that small of a subgroup, like 30% of you. Um, it's fear. So fear or anxiety, depending on who you are, of the reaction of others, specifically your intimate others, to this shift that's happening with you. And by intimate others, I mean you know family, partners, closest friends. Not everyone is very receptive to when someone starts to shift and change quickly because it threatens them and can sometimes mirror to them where they are lacking. So, thing we'll do before we end is for you to breathe into your spine. So breathe in or become very aware or imagine, see, sense, or feel from the tip of your tailbone all the way through the curve of your lower back, up through behind your heart, the top of your spine, into your neck, up into the back of your skull. Becoming very, very aware of your spine. And 
if you can imagine it starting to glow. That's fantastic. For some of you, it might feel tingly. So helping you stay grounded in yourself. So there is a sense of stability even as things start to change around you. For some of you, this change is going to be really rapid. For others, it will be probably a bit too slow. But for some of you, it's going to be really quick. So just allowing yourself to be in your spine so that you're really much more stable good and just notice if you can rest here in your spine or if it's uncomfortable for you just notice amplifying the frequency of ease as you rest in your spine I'll let you stay here for as long as you like. I look forward to meeting you on the next GFC.